distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome. Uh, <clears throat> the warm welcome, of course, with better weather. Uh, but unfortunately, what good, what is good for some, is not good for others. One of our uh, distinguished guests, the army commander, uh, has just landed it and he's uh, still travelling, so he'll be joining us in a short while, and that's the reason for the delay. We apologise for that. On behalf of Geospatial uh, Media and Communications, welcome to the seventh edition of Geo Intelligence India, which is a conference dedicated to defence and internal security. The global security environment today is undergoing a definitive transformation driven by the changing geopolitical scenario and the rapid pace of technological development. With the gradual shift of power from the west to the east, Asia is emerging as the center of gravity of global political and military power. In our context, our security environment is characterized by the volatile situation in our immediate neighborhood in the West and the massive economic and military capability enhancement by our neighbor in the Northeast. Pan-Islamic fundamentalism and jihadi terrorism are a cause for serious concern. Due to its size, location and trade links, India's parameters of security extend well beyond its conventional borders. You are aware we have a 15,000 kilometer land frontier with as many as seven neighbors and a vast 7,500 kilometer maritime boundary with five countries. In addition, we have an EEZ exceeding 2 million square kilometers. The seas surrounding India are likely to see the increasing presence of extra regional forces. Apart from the external threats to security, India has to contend with internal problems of simmering insurgencies and rising Naxalism, the Red Corridor, which is spreading, like somebody said, from Tirupati to Pashupati. India legitimately aspires to be an economic superpower and an essential prerequisite for that is a credible defense capability. Armed forces the world over have realized that it is not mere numbers and massing of forces which will ensure victory in war, but the side which can better harness technology-enabled force multipliers is the one that will emerge victorious. The last few decades have witnessed a significant transformation of armed forces across the globe driven by technological developments, particularly in electronics and information technology. We are in the era of net-centric warfare, characterized by exponentially enhanced situational awareness, decision-making, dissemination of information, and precision strike capability. Put simply, this is a concept of operations that generates increased combat power by networking sensors, decision makers and shooters to achieve shared awareness and synchronized activity. Commanders who employ these capabilities innovatively achieve success at a faster tempo and much lesser cost. The four essential requirements of network-centric warfare are networked communications, information sharing, advanced information technology for data integration and analysis, and network-enabled sensors and platforms. Modern warfare is characterized by C5 I2 TSR, which is command, control, communications, computers, combat systems, intelligence, interoperability, target acquisition, surveillance, and reconnaissance, which is the enhancement of the earlier concept of CQ by. There, these are largely dependent on the availability of geospatial intelligence. 
Geoint can be defined as data, information and knowledge about the adversary that can be referred to a particular location. Intelligence gathering methods could include imagery from signals, measurement and signatures, and human sources. With the advent of digitization and advances in sensor technologies, the techniques employed for mapping have undergone a sea change. While earlier maps were based entirely on traditional land survey techniques, today the technologies of aerial survey and satellite remote sensing have revolutionized the techniques of mapping. The theme of this conference is geospatial force multiplier for modern warfare. We have a rich technical agenda for the conference and we are fortunate to have a galaxy of speakers from all the three armed services, the police, DRDO, industry, and some who have traveled from abroad as well. You would be aware that our armed forces are in the process of finalizing plans for the creation of three new tri-service commands to deal with space, cyber, and special operations. Our three plenary sessions today have therefore been structured accordingly. In the exhibition that will be inaugurated immediately after the session, some of the latest geospatial products and solutions will be on display. We are confident that the deliberations over the next two days will provide an excellent opportunity to all stakeholders of the GEOINT community for sharing their ideas. Once again, a welcome to all of you. I now request Shri Kaushik Chakravarti for his address.